Hi, this is Junaid uh, with another lecture, Sharpen the Saw, Effective and Efficient Learning in Medicine. Sharpen the Saw, the phrase comes from Stephen R. Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and the word habit that he uses is fantastic because um, learning is a habit. And how do you really define a habit? He defined it perfectly. A def um, it's a pattern where with increased repetition, you have facility of performance. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. And hence, if you are learning on a regular basis, you're going to get better at it. And if you don't learn, or if you stop learning, you're going to fall out of the habit. And it's going to get harder and harder. Um, on a side note, go ahead and watch these two videos that I have linked on the YouTube. It, these are fantastic summaries of the books, if anyone's interested. And I think everyone should read this book. So... Effective and efficient learning is the key here. Uh, effective is that you do something that is actually decisive. You take out your time for it. You actually avoid distractions and use the resources. There's so many distractions already, uh, but you have to take time for it. Efficient is where I come in. I'm going to show you the apps and also also show you there's a there are ways to actually decrease distraction if that is possible in today's day and age. So apps and resources that I regularly use, A for library access is Brozine, Read by QXMD, Curators, Journal Club, Reference Managers, Mendeley versus Paperpile. Uh, Paperpile is my favorite. Um, and the other resources uh, that I use is uh, the Neuroanatomy, also called eAnatomy from iMoss. It's a German company, a fantastic app to learn neuroanatomy and calculators like MDCalc. Um, I will do a full separate video on, um, there will be a separate hands-on video, which will actually show all of these in action. So please check back for that. Brozine is, is basically browse magazine and it's combined together. So Brozine. Uh, they have taken a different approach. It doesn't let you search, but what you do is basically you create your own bookshelf with all the journals that you want and you click on them and then it gives you literally issue by issue what are the articles in them and then it is it downloads automatically to your library through proxy connection. The same feature is also available in Read by QXMD. So you can actually go ahead and click on the particular article. Um, and uh, on top of that, there are three important features on Read by QXMD. Number one is uh, keyword search. Number two, um, curated co collections from people, including me. And then um, finally, I think sometimes a proxy server and downloading PDF to Read by QXMD is better. Um, but it's a hit and miss on both apps, so I always use both of them uh, per se. So feel free to use them uh, and decide which one you like. I personally go back and forth between one of them. Brozine actually helps me stay focused on, let's say, the core journal like neurocritical care, seizure, epilepsy, stroke journal. So that's why I use that. Otherwise, when I'm in the mood of just browsing through stuff and finding stuff, then Read by QXMD comes in more handy. Um, the Journal Club, um, this is another app that I use frequently. It basically has all the clinical trials divided into specialties, and you can choose your own favorites. And then there is a very PICO summary on them. So that's very fantastic to go back and review and I have some stroke trials that I've favorited uh, just to make sure that I remember the data or at least when I'm talking to medical students, mid-levels, I am actually using the right data. So that's very ha helpful. It is paid. It was $6.99 and it is well, well worth it in my opinion. This app, the eAnatomy app, could not, I could not have found a better source of learning anatomy and I wish I had it available when I was in medical school or even in residency. Um, it gives you um, the MRIs in all three sections, axial, sagittal and coronal, and you move through them and it labels them. So over here in the picture you see that it says subscription acquired. So it is a subscription based 
app and it's $75 a year but again uh, I have been a subscription subscriber to them for about three years now and I plan to renew it because I like to review neuroanatomy uh, again and again and they keep adding modules so the recently they actually added the module of neuroangiography again I will show this on my hands-on review when I'm doing this MD calc is again must have um, app on your cell phone um, Chaz Bax 2 score has blood score and I stroke scale there are tons of scores and scaling right now um, it is important that I think this is important we do calculate them and then put them rather than you know eyeballing stuff so calculating scores and putting them in your notes and this makes it so much easy and therefore I keep doing it more and more and then eventually when you are compiling the data again some point in the future you can use all this data for your research so for reference managers the two main competitors in my mind are Mendeley and Paperpile Interestingly, these are not two of the, um, I would say, most commonly used. Uh, people use EndNote um, and some other else. Uh, I actually particularly like both of them. Uh, Mendeley is basically has a more traditional interface. It has a desktop app, works better with Microsoft Word. Um, there's a cloud storage option, um, but you know, it's 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 more, as let's say, 2010. Paperpile is actually made on the new cloud structure. So I like it better because I primarily work in Google Drive and work with Google Docs. So assigning the document, assigning my papers and my all my papers are written in Google Docs now. So citations are very easy. Secondly, um, it goes with me. I just have to log in into my website from my Chromebook and I can easily download over the institutional proxy. Uh, which Mendeley actually really lacks. Uh, Mendeley is great when you are getting all the information, uploading, searching in Microsoft Word, but Paperpile actually integrates um, a great library system, citation system, and then PDF storage system, which uses my own Google Drive, so I don't have to pay another person for other drive integrations or storage needs. And then finally, uh, paper downloads via proxy. So all in all, I'm a really fan of paper pile and I will show you um, the whole demonstration that how it really works so there will be a separate video just discussing paper pile other society based resources are fantastic these days um, American Academy of Neurology is a whole online learning program neurocritical care society has what we call neurocritical care on on call Again, all mid-levels, uh, they have a fantastic APP content. Uh, consider subscribing. Uh, American Epilepsy Society also has it, and interestingly and fantastically, it's all free. So, um, and those lectures are really good, done into modules of five minutes each. Uh, again, um, American Epilepsy Society uh, is definitely able to produce better content, in my opinion, and again, available for free as well. So here are the websites where you can go, American Academy of Neurology, Neurocritical Care on Call, and American Epilepsy Society, um, available for everyone, um, at least the American Epilepsy Society modules. Uh, other learning platforms, um, for productivity um, speaking, uh, I use an RSS reader. If, if you're unfamiliar with that, it is basically when Twitter was not there, websites use RSS it is subscription system where you can subscribe and any changes on that particular platform website would actually show a notification so we used it and this is a very old technology we have been I've been using an RSS reader since 2005 the initial one was Google Reader which they discontinued and then I had I switched to Feedly um, the, in, the benefit from as compared to let's say using Twitter or Facebook but right right now all the journals are on Twitter so every time stroke actually publishes an article it tweets out that I have published an article that could be distracting because again when you're scrolling through Twitter you see all the tons of stuff that you know it's crap and you can waste your time so I personally like the RSS uh, model of things and I'll show it to you on the hands-on demo how it works 
podcasts. I'm a I'm actually you a big listener of podcasts. I've always been. Um, not so medicine, interestingly, uh, uh, but I do use it for you know other stuff, TED Talks, Democracy Now, etc. Other pl- platforms that I regularly use for learning is Udemy and Script. Script is is basically an Amazon Prime reading competitor and an Audible competitor. So it has books and it has audiobooks. Uh, it's a fantastic place. Um, well worth the subscription. I pay nine dollars a month for that. If you're looking for podcasts to follow, these are some examples. I do follow these of them. Uh, these both of them. Uh, neurology, of course, there are a few of them. The one that is actually most of the time better is the neurology now and neurology today. Uh, from the other side, these are mostly critical care and. Um, I understand this some most of you are not going to be neurocritical care but I am so I do follow critical care literature as well so that helps me out Uh, of both of them actually neurology side of things I read more so most of it but for critical care I definitely listen to these podcasts books versus reviews versus original research so people say well should I read a book should I read a review article or original research so what is a book in 2019? Um, it's basically a snapshot in time that, hey, this is what happened in history and we have amalgamated all this knowledge and boom, till June of 2018, that is the update. As a matter of fact, most of the time the book actually takes another year to release. So from the release date, it is the snapshot is actually a year before that. So it's basically a snapshot. Uh, It is good for history of the subject, looking through stuff, but at the end of the day, that's what books are in in our day and age. Uh, I like review articles. That's my main source. As a matter of fact, I would would read a review article and then go to original research if I am not familiar with that topic as much. That is my main source uh, of looking through things. Original research, um, I follow mainly Stroke because they actually do come out with direct practice change and that's what I'm looking for I do not look for I don't know neuroscience nature brain etc so follow original research only in your relevant topics only only that has practice impact in my opinion as this is for practical acute inpatient neurology care but if you're an academic sure that's a different story but that's how you divide your time between things the best review articles are published in these three journals. Um, number one is Neurologic Clinics. Fantastic. Their last, um, I think this is May 2019, Vasculitis. Excellent journal. Seminars in Neurology. Again, one of the best journals, but unfortunately, University of Madison that I get subscribed from my library doesn't subscribe to it. So I've not had the chance to actually read them recently. And it is extremely expensive to buy on your own. And of course, Continuum, um, there's, they actually work on an 18-month review of whole neurology. So, for example, this epilepsy is being, uh, right now, 18 months later, exactly epilepsy will be reprinted. So every 18 months, there's actually a complete review of neurology. So again, this is a fantastic snapshots that are taken in time. And you would see that um, if you pick up epilepsy, this one and the last epilepsy one, what are the differences? So uh, not only this gives you a fantastic way to learn, it also gives you what happened in history. So uh, continuum is is important um, to keep in mind. Books that I have used, and I think these are the only books, in my opinion, to actually read. This specifically does not include neuromuscular, so don't yell at me because I don't do that on a regular basis so for those of you who do send me a link I'll be happy to at least update the slides Um, neuroanatomy Hal Bloomfield's book neuroanatomy through clinical cases is the only book you need and you will ever need this is absolutely must read and it gives you anatomy in a way that is actually applicable so it's fun it's it's easy to read and also you remember it so must have The neuroradiology book that I love is The Requisites, um, chapter two and chapter three. As a matter of fact, I think it is the neuroanatomy chapter in it is chapter four. 
interestingly for 50 pages that is the best written summary of neuroanatomy that I've ever read so if you're ever interested in reading a very small summary of whole of neuroanatomy and you should really pick this book up the neuroradiology requisites um, and of course the first four chapters are a must read for everyone starting in it and I will actually make a series um, and most of my material is coming from this book general neurology clinical neurology that's standard uh, reference book that have been used um, again it is not the textbook uh, easier to read better to understand neurology for the non neurologist is is truly a well written book um, we have I've always recommended to my psych residents especially at St. Louis University Hospital but I love the way that it flows as a matter of fact it rather reads like a fiction book uh, than a textbook so I love the way it was written and it is again fantastic for anyone who's starting in neurology um, so that's my recommendation stroke there's no good book I mean there are fantastic books a stroke by Kaplan stroke pathophysiology but those are 1600 pages books and uh, unless you are doing a fellowship in stroke or interested in one feel free to pick that up but otherwise these are the two books that I'm going to recommend uh, or at least part books the continuum of cerebrovascular disease is fantastic um, you can go back and look at it and uh, it does give you practical advice um, it is a little dated um, and this is February 2017 we're expecting a new uh, new edition and I'm or actually it might have came through um, the other book that I do recommend is the neurovascular anatomy and this also gives you uh, very good clinical insights um, because it is a case-based approach so this is a fantastic book if you want to buy something and keep as a reference EEG only two books that I've used and I think both of them are fantastic uh, Tatum's book handbook of EEG interpretation uh, absolutely must have easy fast and um, referenceable interestingly so if you're you know thinking oh really what's that and then you can go back so excellent book handbook of ICU EEG monitoring is now on the second edition um, again another book another fantastic book uh, to keep in your arsenal especially like a person like me who do neuro ICU and epilepsy and also interested in neuro monitoring uh, must have neurocritical care um, the pocketbook uh, from the Neurocritical Care Society is a fantastic resource. Uh, Neurologic Clinics, um, they published back in November 2017. Um, again, a really excellent review. Again, I don't like big textbooks and these two reviews are much better and in my opinion much faster and the topics you need to go into detail then you can choose to. Um, but these are excellent reads so there will be a hands-on demo of all these apps that you're showing and then of course paper pile as well so thank you so much for um, your attention visit my website provide me feedback and subscribe to this channel thank you